Hello and good evening. We're live on News Cafe. Today we will be talking with multimedia journalists and their take on the trending national issues in the country. I'm Mai Rodriguez sitting in for Jing Magsaysay. She is an investigative journalist and currently a correspondent for the South China Morning Post, Asia's oldest English newspaper. She has her own political website, RaisaRobles.com, and I follow her blog, I follow her on Twitter, she is, of course, Miss Raisa Robles. Welcome, Raisa. Thank you Good for evening. inviting me here. Okay, he is the editor-in-chief of the New Media, a pioneer digital marketing website in the country, and Unibox, or is it Unbox? Unbox, Unbox a lifestyle gadget and product feature site. He is a certified e-marketing consultant, top internet marketing, and a social media expert. He is Carlo Ople. Welcome, Carlo. Thanks for having me. How are you today? Doing good, doing good. All right, so let's begin our discussion. How did you guys start into social media? What got you into blogging, Raisa? Were you the, one of the first to no, put up I'm a blog? No, I'm one of the... I wasn't a pioneer in it. Okay. I did it by trial and error. Uh -huh. uh, I kept crashing my website, but that was okay. the only way to do it. Because I felt that I was gathering so much news mm -hmm. that was not appearing in the traditional media, the newspapers. Mm -hmm. So I felt I wanted to, out of a sense of frustration, I wanted to share mm -hmm. what I knew about Philippine okay. politics. So you had in yourself the need to share yes. like everything you're um, reading, what you're gathering, largely on print or the uh, internet already? at that time? Um, I was writing for South China Morning mm -hmm. Post uh, full-time and I would do interviews and you know they give you a 500 word story but you you interview a person for two hours mm -hmm. and so you cannot yeah. cram Sayang the entire material. Sayang oh. material and I get so many exclusives and yeah, that's I what I, I, I felt that I wanted to write mm -hmm. you know and in you know when you're doing when you're a foreign correspondent uh, most of the time you're doing hard news mm -hmm. but then uh, and the audience is different it's foreign what the foreign reader wants is not mm -hmm. what the local reader wants okay. and i felt i also wanted to share mm -hmm. with the local mm -hmm. readers so you get to Filipinos. put your personal insights yes okay. you're right okay so, Carlo, what about you? How did you recognize the potential of uh, digital marketing? Well, um, for social networking first, I started in mm -hmm. 2003 social media when Friendster came out, primarily to use it as a tool to court my girlfriend. <laughs> but testimonial, you know, back then. So that's how social media started. And Friendster was yeah. a big Friendster back then. was yeah. so huge back then. Okay. But, but as, as early as, as that time, you can already say that the, the nature of the internet was growing towards a more share culture we're in content that you put out and you write uh, mm -hmm. if people like it they'll start posting the links and sharing mm -hmm. it uh, across different other sites and people will pick it up mm -hmm. so that's when i realized now I, I would i wanted to start writing i initially started about uh, writing about current events politics then whatever that i eventually fancied gadgets mm -hmm. new media digital Mm -hmm. uh, marketing, so there, man. until now I own mm -hmm. like seven sites, so... <laughs> Again, seven pardon, there's, yeah. there's pardon, an, a need for us as human beings. Do you agree that we just need to share and, you know, you want to connect with other people, more people? Is That's that it? true. And the Filipino is the most social creature. <laughs> and that's why Friendster, I think, died because uh, Filipinos really went into it and uh -huh. Friendster wasn't making any money. Why is that so? Well, initially Friendster... Or was that because of competition? It, it was primarily because uh -huh. of competition. Initially, uh, bulk of the population of Friendster was really from the Philippines, 50%. Um, when Facebook came in and all of the other social mm -hmm, networking yeah. sites, they weren't able to innovate their site and change it. Yes. And to make it more competitive versus the other social networking mm -hmm. sites. So people started to move. 
until eventually their their population dwindled down. Mm -hmm. And now, if I'm not mistaken, Friendster is a gaming and dating site. It's no it's longer a social networking okay. site. It's still alive. Uh, most of its users, I think, are either in Malaysia and still some uh -huh. here in the Philippines. It's now a dating uh -huh. and gaming site. Okay, and it's also about photo sharing. Huh? Well, initially you it was about what's photo sharing. It's easier to upload. Yeah, but that was okay. the start. Now they're literally uh -huh. a dating site. So. Okay, what's the difference between a blogger and a social media journalist? We hear about um, multimedia mm -hmm. journalism. Does this um, include bloggers? Actually, blogger is a more general term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a journalist is just one kind of blogger. Uh, we have so many kinds of bloggers. You have a fashion blogger. Mm -hmm. Actually, anybody can be a blogger. You just... Uh, put up a site, you go to, uh, to WordPress, you know, Blogspot, and then you just upload photos, your thoughts, mm -hmm. and that's a Anything blogger. Anything that catches yes. your interest or what you're yes. passionate about, yes. you can blog about it. And a journalist, well, you have to keep certain standards. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually when you're a journalist, um, you have to verify and you have to always mm. try to be fair. If you're talking about somebody, you try to get the source to, to mm -hmm. you know, uh, get his feedback before you can put it up. So is uh, news gathering different? Oh, um, much, much on social different. Media? Um, and, and I can speak from several lenses. I used to work for a, for a TV network mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and it's amazing because they now have social media desks. Wherein yes, uh, what yes. they do is they yeah. call Twitter, Facebook, uh, they follow several influencers uh, like Risa uh -huh. and try to figure yes. out what they're writing about, what they're tweeting about. But of course, uh, the big difference is uh, since it's a, it's, it's a TV network, they really have to confirm what that person is tweeting is correct or not. So they mm -hmm. can't just, you know, if you mm -hmm. see a tweet and somebody says something, mm -hmm. you just can't take it already and post it as news. Yeah. They have to make sure that what they're saying yeah. is real. Before they and I know this, that's news already. When a public figure, of course, tweets or a celebrity tweets, that's already news and you just have to attribute who yeah. tweeted such and such. Breaking news, uh, news often breaks now on Twitter, if you notice. Yes, I noticed. So, um, most journalists they, they keep tabs on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a time um, most of the reporters, uh, if, if you know, back then, to, to be able to talk to a reporter or a network, you'd actually have to go to the station and or call mm -hmm. them. But now it's just now one tweet. tweet away, <laughs> you know, and you're already talking to a, a reporter, an yes. anchor, or even a, a media station. Yeah. So that, that changes and I everything. It's much easier to invite um, speakers or guests to a show, mm -hmm. right? Because you just have to contact them on Twitter or uh, DM that person. Yes. Diba? It's much easier. And it's actually, yeah, it engages more. Um, it encourages more interaction. So but has the practice of uh, journalism changed since um, the advent of social media? Perhaps it's more frenetic and frantic. Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps um, you have to learn how to use different devices. Uh, you have to know how to upload uh, video. You have to do podcasting even, you know. But there's always a basic thing about journalism, which is uh, impartiality, fairness, mm -hmm. uh, accuracy, mm -hmm. you know, and truth. Yes. So journalism on print, in broadcast, Yes. Also, the standard of ethics there That's right. follows. It's good that you mentioned ethics. Yes, on social media. It, yes. should, uh, it should also follow that same standard of ethics. Um, okay, when you talk about social media, you're talking about Facebook. Basically, Facebook and Twitter, mm -hmm. YouTube, the other social sharing sites. Okay. okay? Uh, but there's... There's the a larger uh, universe, no? which includes blogs and also news websites. And social media is like the, that part where you have a lot of interaction. You now have interaction on 
or news websites. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot. You know, when I was a journalist, I hardly got uh, feedback from any of the people that I, I wrote about. Mm -hmm. and when I you hardly, were in print. I mean, a print yes. journalist. And I hardly got feedback from uh, uh, things that I wrote about, no? But now, instantly, when somebody can say, tell you on Twitter, you're wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's a bit, you know, you, you, you get taken aback a bit with that. But that's good. Yes. Because it makes you more responsible mm -mm. in your writing. How do you take criticism? Uh, well, like any articles. human being, you know, <laughs> as my husband. Sometimes you feel bad. <laughs> my husband, actually, I have to tell you that uh, a lot of the things that I know about blogging, about social media, came from my husband. So he's like my editor. Yeah. And also, well, I, I learned a lot from him because he's an internet expert. Okay. Uh, and he lectures on social mm. media. So, um, Carlo, is social media better, uh, a better outlet for news, or, or does it complement it? Well, it's really complementary in mm. its nature. Uh, at the end of the day, nothing can still beat, well, right now, uh, the reach, especially here, of, here in the Philippines, of mm -hmm. TV uh, and radio. No? Um, internet still penetrates a certain amount of people. Uh, I mean, it, the, the penetration hasn't really reached uh, crazy levels yet, uh, as we see with mass media. But the, the people using social media and the internet, of course, is a very you know, different group. Eh? Uh, and mm -hmm. they're the ones who always check their phones, uh, check their devices. So whatever people, to whatever news stations or reporters tweet, parang it's, parang it's, in a way, they're like subscribed already mm -hmm. to what those name, uh, news outlets say. So it's a, it's a quick way for people to get their news. And there's this saying eh, na parang, uh, the news finds you now on social mm -hmm. networks. When you're on Facebook, uh, you're checking stuff and suddenly something comes up and then yeah. that, that's how you find out ah that's what happened pala with senator ganito mm. or that's what happened with ganyan uh, you weren't actually going to the news website you were just you know checking yeah. out pictures of your friends even on twitter you yeah. can already get updated then on what's it will happening. just pop out on your feed now oh senator soto did this mm, oh, some, yeah. something <laughs> like that but you know there's something interesting going on no? there's a ripple effect from social media to, tra to traditional uh, media like for instance uh, I write something mm -hmm. and then as uh, somebody told me you know uh, you were mentioned in Bulgar you know? <laughs> so it really it does go down to to the um, masse okay or uh, it also diverts you to the traditional media. no what I mean is that uh, we think you know and there are some candidates who say that social media, they're negating uh, social media because it doesn't go down to the masses, the CDE, mm -hmm. whose votes they are trying to get. Yeah. But what they do not understand is that there's a ripple effect from what the news and the opinion that's coming out in social media actually goes down. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the radio, I've heard my name mentioned. Uh, for instance, in DZMM mm -hmm. or DZ double, uh, DZBB, mm -hmm. so it's it, it really goes goes there. Okay. And uh, there's another thing uh, that we must uh, remember about social media. You know, um, we it affects the the, the leaders actually, mm -hmm. and the opinion makers. Mm -hmm. And I guess in a country, that's where you're able to move mm -hmm. policy. Mm -hmm. Remember what happened to uh, the RH yes. law uh -oh. and Congress. Yeah. It really affected uh -oh. them. Social media played a huge role yes. in yeah, influencing how the lawmakers yes. think. Yes. Okay. okay, we'll have to take a short break. News Cafe will return after these reminders. Stay with us. You're still watching News Cafe on the Solar News Channel. We're still joined by our guests, investigative journalist and blogger Raisa Robles and Carlo Oples, social media expert and digital marketing 
pioneer. Can I say okay. that? Okay, you said once in your article that um, TV and digital are connected at the hip. What does this mean for the 2013 campaign? Uh, I actually mentioned that during, uh, it, it was part of a speech during the Internet and Mobile Marketing Association mm -hmm. Summit uh, last year in November. So basically, this, this, this is a great takeoff point from what you said, Rice, about oh. the ripple effect of social yes. media and digital. Wherein, because traditional outlets follow social media and they really make it a point to monitor and check out what people are talking about, what people are reacting to, what people are sharing, and you can actually quantify it because mm -hmm. you can see how many people shared a particular article, uh, there's a tendency for uh, whatever is online to get featured on TV, to That's get true. featured on radio, mm -hmm. To yes. get featured on print. So, kung, if, if this is the circle of influence of digital here in the Philippines, uh, it gets magnified several times uh, mm -hmm. because of uh, TV, radio, and yeah. print. And they say that it's connected because uh, before, when you're on TV, you really don't know what you really can't get feedback. Eh? Now, yeah, whatever, who knows, people are probably tweeting right now about mm -hmm. what we're talking. Mm -hmm. So there's it, it, the phone, internet, texting, mm -hmm. or any other kind of technology. It's a way for people to react to what they see on TV, what they read mm -hmm. on print, uh, what they hear on radio. So I think that's why I think it's connected. Mm -hmm. So is um, digital marketing and um, web journalism bigger now more than ever? Definitely, and it, it, yeah. it's going to go even higher, primarily uh -huh. because of the advent of smartphones. And I'm not just talking about the expensive HTC yeah. or iPhone or Samsung devices. Yeah. During December, uh, the Cherry Mobile smartphones, that mm -hmm. the ones that sell for 4,000 pesos, mm -hmm. uh, sold out in three hours the moment they hit the store. Mm -hmm. That's here in the, in, Philippines? In the Philippines? In three mm -hmm. hours. The moment it sold out. Primarily because Filipinos were buying it because it was so cheap. Yes. Uh, and they were they and were using. And it works just as fine. As yeah, a, and it's literally as just as good ones. as yeah, an okay. Android, uh, you know, as really? a normal Android device. <laughs> and you have other local players. There's uh, other than Cherry Mobile. There's Star Mobile. Yeah. There's Cloud Phone, uh, and several other. Yes, I noticed, and much uh, cheaper. Yeah, and they're right? very very cheap, okay. and they're really really good. And the thing is, um, while we're still waiting for data connection, you know, internet from Smart and Globe. Mm -hmm to go down in terms of pricing, mm -hmm. uh, malls are already offering free Wi-Fi, you know? So people buy the phones, yeah. they connect to the free Wi-Fi, yeah. and they're able to get online. So I think this okay. is a big thing, and we'll, we'll see a lot of Filipinos get connected in the okay. next few months. So we're more connected online. We're getting news online as we go more mobile. Yes, definitely. How do you see this um, affecting print media? Well, it depends on how the print industry will react. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we're already seeing several uh, print companies yeah. get into digital talking yeah. about summit and we already la in last year um newsweek announced that it yeah, was their last issue yeah with the hashtag <laughs> yeah what about do you see um anyone or any, any other major news uh, magazine well outside the philippines of course the 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 closing down or the effect on print is much more accelerated mm -hmm. here in the philippines we have to take note that the penetration isn't still that high well, while it's considerable, considerable at around 20 to 30 percent, um, it's still not enough to close down a newspaper or to mm -hmm. close but, down yeah. uh, several magazines. But it's growing, know, but it's not yet enough. Mm -hmm. Most newspapers here in the Philippines are not there to make a profit. They're there for political purposes mm -hmm. of the owners. Okay. Um, and if you look at the total circulation, I think Verhel Santos, the Business World publisher, mm -hmm. told me that if you put together the circulation of all newspapers combined, it's uh, less than one million. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I still noticed a lot of um, our broadsheets have like full page ads, back to back ads. Yes. But um, you do not know how, how they much they this? are. Uh, they're earning from them. Uh -huh. You know, some of these uh, newspapers, they give, they, they slash, they give discounts, hefty discounts. Mm -hmm. But I think newspapers will, all, will always be there because people just, some people really just want to read. Mm -hmm. But then they will have to change themselves mm -hmm. and even they are going multimedia. Yeah. If you yes. notice. All right. Let's talk about um, the big issue today. Uh, the anti-cybercrime law, especially since um, the TRO will lapse soon on February yes. 5 and the Supreme Court will start oral arguments on January 
yes. January 15. That's on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your expectations? Well, they sat on it for the longest time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't think they'll act on it anytime soon. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you, Raisa? <laughs> Frankly, I believe you know, politicians of all stripes, they want the cybercrime law. Mainly Definitely. because of libel. Definitely. Personally, I have always assumed as a journalist that there is libel mm -hmm. on the internet. Mm -hmm. But as a journalist, yes. there, it's different when you are not... Uh, a this, yes. And then, you know, this is one thing that uh, politicians do not seem to want to make a differ, uh, to, mm -hmm. to differentiate the journalist and the commenters. On the net. Are they going to take a closer look on that libel provision on uh, cyberspace? Well, we really don't know because uh, they, sat, I like think what I said, so. they sat on it, but hopefully they will take uh -huh. a look and try to edit it uh -huh. and add more provisions. The IRR still isn't out. so. But you know, it's not just libel. That's the problem yeah. with it. It's the entire... Uh, it's so many sections in the law mm -hmm. that are the problem. It gives the certain officials in the DOJ, the NBI, so laws. much power. And not only that, to spy. Yeah. To spy yeah. on ordinary people. I would be very afraid. Mm -hmm. And you know why? Just think of it. Recently, who have been, you know, who have been under the gun or who have been eased out of office? Remember, uh, the PDEA, the, the chief of the Drug Enforcement Agency had to resign. The NBI chief mm -hmm. uh, was made to resign. I mean, these are the people who, ne mm -hmm. who you know, might have access to this kind of power and you can totally trust them. We need to have more safeguards. Mm -hmm. Okay, what other issues have caught your eye and have generated a lot of buzz online? What do you foresee in 2013? Well, definitely the, the upcoming elections. Okay. Uh, you're already seeing a lot of politicians with online ads on Facebook. You'll see, them, you'll see their faces on the right side. By the way, let me just say this now. Um, Facebook advertising works. Uh, when people click the ad, that's when the advertiser pays. Mm. So when they click, mm -hmm. advertiser pays. So if you see a face of a politician there that you don't like, what you do is you click it 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good advice. What about you, Raisa? What do we look forward to this year online? They're going to use uh, anonymous posting yes, definitely. to Agreed. destroy... Okay. Uh, Credibility Agreed. of certain candidates. Yeah, I'm sure it's the new white paper. Yes, it's oh, the new yeah. white paper But you see uh, It's up to the reader to be more discerning The beauty of the internet is that if there is a false, you know Information somebody else tries to correct it. It will autocorrect itself. Yes, <laughs> that's the beauty of the internet and that's why censorship would skew that mm-hmm I okay. believe, totally believe in freedom uh, on the net. Okay. So, uh, your advice, be more vigilant? Yes. Be more be discerning, dis be more yeah, critical. Discerning. And click the ads of the politicians you don't like. Okay. Okay, that's all the time we have today. We would like to thank our guests for joining us here in the studio, Carlo Ople and Miss Raisa Robles. Okay, that ends our discussion on social media and journalism. Um, We'd like to see you again next Friday for another round of 360-degree discussion right here on News Cafe. I'm Mai Rodriguez. Salamat po and good evening.